across the fields I know so well Seems I've known them since forever All the stories I can tell I see my father in the meadow He knows this day will be That I will leave tomorrow That I will be a memory And I see We sang together Bunny boys and violets blue And I'll take songs to carry with me To hold my memory Over one million people died and 1.8 million immigrated. The population of Ireland, close to 8.5 million in 1845, had drastically fallen to 6.6 .6 million by 1851. The child Jesus of Prague didn't do the business today, but we'll forgive him for that. He did it every other day. Now, uh, I suppose I can't be described as the owner of Strokestown Park. I actually bought it on behalf of our company, Westwood Garage. And I hold in my hand here what I read 35 years ago this month. This is a famine plea for the tenants of Clunahi, the townland I live in and the townland I was born in. It's a very moving plea, and I'll read you some extracts from it. Just, uh, it's, a, it's only a couple of sheets of paper. And I found this quite accidentally on the first time I was ever through that house in 1949. Of all the thousands of papers in it, it was the third paper I picked up. Clunahy is a townland, as I've said, in which I was born. And it, this document was a very special document to me. In fact, I would credit it with completely changing our plans for Strokestown Park, and we certainly wouldn't be here today if I hadn't found that document. And they were writing to Dennis Mann, chairman of the local Famine Relief Committee, and also owner of Strokestown Park at that time, the man who was shot the following year. And the description, I might quote from it, was that when they went looking for the scheme they wanted to get on, that the ganger told them that there was a hundred people to be broke from work, was the term they used, so they had no help. Now, if I might quote further from this plea, we cannot, in an actual quote, we cannot much longer withstand their cries for food. And another quote from the plea, we are not for joining anything illegal or contrary to the laws of God, the land, unless pressed to by hunger. And again, quote, memorialist. Of course, this plea was written by either the local school teacher or the local parish priest, or even maybe by the local parson. Uh, it goes on further to say that, that the memorialist Therefore, hope and trust that you will, for charity and the suffering humanity's sake, use your influence, this was to Dennis Mahan, to this effect, and we will be in duty bound to pray. Well, standing where I found this in the smoking room of that house, 
35 years ago, I, I was speechless. And I can tell you, I read it more than once. Under the name of Thomas Mann, there was the list of the names of the senior tenants or head tenants of that estate. And again, under the name, there was another list of tenants of a one Sir John Conry that will be much and much better known in England than in Ireland. Because I had taken, I interested in history, I immediately recognized this name. Sir John Conry was the guardian and played such a nearly life in the household of Queen Victoria and is very, very well documented and written about in England. Now this also described the starving tenants of Sir John Conroy. And I knew and was appalled at that very time Sir John Conroy was writing to the Queen of England, to her Prime Minister and to others, pleading for, he said, the title he was promised to be made Lord Elphin, just down the road here, when his tenants were starving for their lives, and quite a few of them didn't survive. Thank you very much. Remember the victims of the Great Famine, those souls, pure and innocent, who left this world through starvation and disease. Open our hearts to have compassion and respect for all of your children, of every faith and creed, of every nationality, culture and language. Open our hands to be generous with what we have and to share with those less fortunate. And open our minds to the understanding that just as you created us to share this earth, earth together, so you intended us to live together in harmony and peace, caring for one another, and ensuring that all of humanity have equal access to such necessities of life as food, drink, health, and safety from harm. Let us pray that famine and disease are eradicated from this world we inhabit, and that we can join together as one community in thanking you, almighty God, for a world filled with all that we need. Amen. As we draw lessons from our famine experience in a world which still knows famine and hunger, we pray for the many people who still live in the shadow of great need. May we never fail in our Christian duty to share with those who are denied their basic rights in today's world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Lord God, on a day when we know little discomfort apart from rain, we remember those on whom the rains of Roscommon poured when their stomachs were empty and their limbs were bare. I hear her and her, an animal tay, a hug beard and a mud tine, is quivin lean a niche, you shoot a tog, maritol and antinous. Javor or Baki, his arn and all this. To spawn doing a tog of mahas, a mage gur fader than a yenith. Can car or horch don look the tough we cush. Augustani eve, a ebrian or a son. Grimish and ish gumag a lower beyond. Dug up dun or down, Grimish a show. Tree creased or dinner. Amen.
Our Heavenly Father, it is with a great sense of sadness that we gather here today to remember again those years of famine, a time of deprivation and oppression, injustice and suffering, especially in this county. We remember before you those who died from hunger or disease, those who were evicted from their homes, those who saw emigration with all its dangers as their only hope of a better life. Heavenly Father, we pray for the poor, the homeless, and the hungry people around the world. We pray for faith that we might have hope, hope that food will be accessible and affordable for those in need. To Allah belongs all that's in the heavens and earth. He is the rich, the praised. If all the trees in the earth were pens and the sea with seven more seas to replenish it with ink, the words of Allah would never end. Allah is the Almighty, the wise, your creation and your resurrection are but as a single soul. Allah is the hearer, the seer. Distinguished guests and friends, and privileged to be here in Strokestown, where we gather today to honor our ancestors, the million men and women and children who lost their lives during the years of the Great Hunger and got the war. Most of us gather here today have been able to do so because our people before us managed to stay living and provide. Against all the odds of politics and history, the slyness of a fungus, they survived. Whether they did it through luck, or kindness, or the structure of theirs, and our DNA can't be sure. But what we do know is that today, as their descendants, we carry the generational memory of one got the more deep within us. This day, a day of commemoration. Surely, the dead of Ungurt the war have never been closer. It's our country's duty to honor them. It's our nation's privilege to remember them. Today, together, we do that. From Durkin O'Neill, total number of souls, 11. Townland of Gortius Maguire. Kennedy, Maguire, Farrell, McCormack, Doyle. Total number of souls, 55. Townland of Gortus Murray, McNeil, Madden, Murphy, Brannan, Maguire, Colligan, Murray. Total number of souls, 39. Provided aid and assistance. Forgive those who knowingly or unknowingly turn their back on the starving and the dying. In your goodness, O oh God, you created a world of abundance, more than enough to sustain all of creation. May we remember today also the victims of hunger in our world. Help us not to turn away from their suffering, but to pray, to work, and to give, so they too may experience the goodness you intend for all creation. We make this prayer to the most loving God. Amen. In Anamanahar, I was a big, I can split nails. Amen. <laughs> 